Okay, so day three of the advent of code, and I will admit this one was a lot trickier in JQ. Um, I know how to solve it in JavaScript, and so that's kind of my go-to language, but JQ is, the point is to make it difficult for myself. Um, and the part of the reason it was difficult was, firstly, there is no kind of for each, or not, not, I mean, there is a for each, but it's there's no, way of um keeping track of like previous elements in arrays and there's no real global variables or anything like that um which you might have seen in the previous advent of codes i did but also um i'm faced with this particular today's particular problem is solving uh converting numbers to from binary to decimal which doesn't exist in jq at all so i had to implement that from scratch as well so uh i actually added it to my JQ recipes I have my blog where I've got from binary to decimal so you can take a value um, map it to an array and uh, what it does is it reverses the array uh, stores that as a scoped variable creates uh, creates a loop um, uh, basically reduce for the length of uh, the string itself or the the, the, the array so for uh, captures that as the value i uh, starts at the zero and then um, if the particular index value is um, one so the first one is one then it will do the current value plus two to the power of the current index value so um, uh, hmm wondering two to the power of yeah two to the power of naught is one I think I'm being a bit daft here Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Two to the power of naught is one. So that creates one, and then it goes over the next loop and so on and so forth. Um, adding that value up and eventually it spits it back out again. So you get, in this case, whatever it is, 15, not 15, 17, something, name it crap, uh, nine, I think. One, two, four, eight, yeah, nine. So <clears throat> I had to create this, and I'll need it in my arsenal of functions to be able to solve this. I have already solved it, but I'm gonna talk through how I would solve it. So the problem presented is there is a list of binary looking values um, and you have to work your way through each effectively column of values. And then you need to work out um, the most common value and take that most common value and use its value. So if the most common value in the first column is one, then our starting value is one. The most common value in the second column is uh, zero. So now we have one, zero, and so on until you build up a, um, a new binary-like number. Um, and in this example, the gamma rate is that number. Um, so we have you know, one, zero, one, one, zero, which is 22 in decimal. And then it uses the least common for the, um, uh, what's it called, the epsilon rate. Um, and then they multiply the two together to get the, the answer. So in JQ, this is how I have solved it, um, even though I think I've worked out a simpler way in even since. Um, but I literally started this this morning, so I think about it this morning and only really finished it today at six. Um, so I've got my list. Um, I need to pull it in as, uh, so well, you can see it's converting it to numbers, so you know, 00111 becomes 111. So I need to treat that as a raw. Uh, so it comes as a string, so I need to slurp it so I get it all in uh, one go because I need to treat the whole thing in one go. Um, and then what I need to do is parse this lot. So I would do, uh, first of all, clean up any kind of trailing new lines that I might have. So write, um, write trim, string, and new lines, um, and then split on the new lines. And then what I want to do is break this down into an array of numbers. So I've mapped this and then split into uh, each element and then map that to number. Okay, so that's the, the structure I want to work with to start off with. Let's stick that in a function called parse and call parse right at the beginning. So <clears throat> that's the first step. The next step is I need to be able to pick the, uh, I need to kind of work my way through starting at the zero index of each one of these arrays. So I'm going to do um, array from index uh, zero and I'm going to write that so def array index zero i um, 
And then what I'm going to do is map uh, that. Yeah, OK. So what this does is I ch this should give me an array of these, this first column, then the second column, third, fourth, and so on. Um, so I need to use that in a for each to go through the total width of that binary thing. Um, and this needs to be kind of a pointer to the array from left to right. So I'm going to do uh, uh, this. I'm going to do for each um, range, and it's going to be the first element and the length of the first element. So the first element, I'll just comment this out and show you. So first is the first array, and the length gives me how wide this is. So I need to basically pick this up at some point. If I do range, um, I'll get 0, 1, 2, 3, 5. So I can use that for for each. Um, so there's the for each as dollar i. And now I've got my iterator. So I'm going to start with uh, this is the init function. So I'm not going to do anything. The extract function, which I'm not going to do anything. Um, and then sorry, the update, I'm not going to actually update it. I'm just going to return something. So if I return out the value, what I want to do is pick from the array and I'm going to do dollar i. So <clears throat> now I've got kind of a, a non JavaScript non array um, of each one of these kind of restructured. So if I wrap that lot in a square brackets, I get it as an array. Um, and from this, actually, what I would like to do is find. Um, what is the most significant number and what is the most insignificant or least common? Most common, least least common. So um, I need to, hmm. so I could do length as dollar L and then I can do, um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I need to count. So let's create a function called count def. I'm going to count some value and I'm going to do um, map select dot equals v and then length. And I'm going to do count zeros. Uh, that didn't work. Why not not work? Count. Maybe I'll put dollar there. Does that make a difference? It makes no difference. Uh, what have I done? Count zero. Let's get rid of that L thing. Unexpected double equals. Oh, wait, select no, brackets. Yeah. Uh, now my brackets are messed up. Do it. So uh, a map select combined is basically a filter in JavaScript. Um, so this is saying this is returning the number of zeros in each one of the. Um, columns and since we have so we do um was it length as dollar l len and we can do count um and then we can return dot and uh dollar len minus dot yeah so we've got five zeros and seven ones which i don't know one Two, three, four, five. Yeah, it looks right. So it looks a bit weird. Or I could just do count. I could do this. Count one. Which is probably technically more expensive, but it's no big deal. <clears throat> so now what do we want to do? We want to take those values and um hmm. We need a, we need to choose which one is, so this is the, the zero. So which, whichever of these two arrays is greater. So uh, most significant, um, so what I'm trying to say is def most significant is, uh, we're gonna do if dot zero is greater than dot one, then we have a zero, else a one end. 
Right, so, uh, where did we just get one of those? Oh, we need to map that. There we go. Okay, so we're starting to get value. So what this is saying is out of these two counts, whichever is whichever count is biggest, this is the zero, this is the one, we get that value back. Um, and what was the gamma rate? So the gamma rate was one, zero, one, one, zero, one, zero, one, one, zero. Okay, cool. So that is the gamma. Let's put that in there. Um, gamma. Right. And then we want the uh, epsilon. So you spot that. And we do map least significant, which is kind of the inverse of that, I guess. Um, <clears throat> oh, that's blown up. Oh, no, yeah. Least significant. Uh, what have I gone wrong? Least significant. Least sign. Oh, yeah, there we go. Least significant. Um, zero, one, 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 zero, zero, one. Uh, which is that? And then we have to convert these to binary. So I'm just going to drop in my function, which took me quite a while to work out from binary. Uh, from binary, I'm going to drop that function straight. And there we go. So we've got 22 and 9, and then we're going to do dot gamma multiplied by dot epsilon, epsilon 198. Which is that value, and then uh, I've already given an answer. Um, where's my puzzle input? Down here, oops, down here somewhere. <clears throat> so this is the puzzle input. We drop that into there. We get 3309 something something something. What we get? There you go. Cool. So that is part one. Uh, I'm going to undo that and go back to the simple version. <clears throat> So we build up a bunch of functions there. Part two is not that much more difficult, but way more text. Um, so really, this is kind of the crux, this bit. Starting with all 12 numbers, consider from uh, only from the first, only the first bit of each number the more one bits, uh, there are more one bits than zero bits, seven ones and five zeros. So keep only the seven numbers with a one in the first position. So <coughs> it then whittles down the list from these, whatever, seven, down to these four, because it moves on to the next one. It says the um, zero is most significant. So choose all, at, uh, sorry. Zero is most significant in this list at position two. So, or position one, if you're doing index zero. So um, we pick all of the values that have a zero at position one, index zero. And then we repeat for the third. So we've got one, one, one. So we have three ones, so you end up with these ones. And it narrows it down until you end up with a single value and then you multiply the two so you've got your oxygen and your whatever co2 um so i think i still need most of these functions um but what do we need to change so we need to excuse me So really, kind of this logic has to change completely. Um, and I think that I'm using a for each still, but I'm actually going to use the update part of the for each. Because as I loop through, I want this list to reduce down. And that's one of the fe oh, one of the features of the for each. I don't, there's no, I can't think of a logical mapping in it's like um, in JavaScript, the equivalent is having a, a for each that maps as well. So every time you do the loop in, th in this part, 
it can reduce or change the contents of your the uh, the thing that you're iterating on. So that's what we're going to do here. Um, so we need to, or we, I need to, um, I need to, what do I need to do? I need to, um, <clears throat> find the in, find the values for the index and get the most significant. So I'm going to just get rid of this bit for a minute and I'm going to pipe that straight into uh, most sig. <clears throat> so the first time it runs, it tells me that the most significant Oh, hello. Hang on. The most significant value for the first column is one. So this is the update, and I want to put all that together and do as dollar sig. And then what that's going to do is say, um, I need to update the array to only return those values. So I'm going to map select value at i equals sig where that's the extract so yeah that kind of worked um it's a bit difficult to see what i'm looking at i might just work out the length so we've got seven four three two one and then this has uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And then what do we say you got? 4, 3, 2, 1. Uh, 4, 3, 2, 1. Okay, so the last value in that should be, hopefully, oops, the last one. Oh, it's not going to work. Um, so I can wrap this in an array and I can do last, <clears throat> yeah, and then zero, kind of ugly, um, but actually I can maybe only print if length is equal to one, then dot end, uh, uh, then else empty end. But I still get this kind of weird structure. So I think I need to do last, last. That's fine. No big deal. Um, and then from binary, 23, which is this value. OK, cool. Um, and then the other way around is the least significant. So I'm just going to check that I get whatever this is, uh, 10. <clears throat> if I just swap that out for a second, least significant. 10. Okay, cool. All right, so uh, uh, it's most of that code is reused. I'm just going to drop, I think, I'm going to drop this chunk into a function. Call it get rating. And I'm going to do def get rating um, semicolon. Okay. And then this bit. That bit becomes a variable. So I'm going to call this op. I'm going to pass in the op. And I'm going to do least significant. And then what I'm going to do is create an array. Well, yeah, I'm going to do an array. Screw it. Um, least significant. Whoops. And then just copy that. And most significant. And that's not going to work. Uh, what do I need to do here? Do I need to, what's going on? Cannot index a number. Oh, okay. Apparently just wrap stuff in brackets. Um, and then just dot zero. No. I mean, I could have made an object. It's probably nicer, isn't it? Turn to 30. Turn to 30, so let's put in our real input. Pop that in there. We got twenty nine eight one zero five and yeah, there you go. So 
This code goes up on GitHub as well. So if you're at all interested in some completely gnarly um, JQ, then this is the, the puppy for you. Um, I'm still, uh, if this was a much bigger list, I'd probably not count it twice. It's kind of a bit expensive. Um, and I'm sure there's better ways of doing this, but uh, like I'm not super keen this last last, but it's because I think the uh, the least significant has won twice. I can't, I think I can break, I think I can break out before reach, but it is messy. Um, there is a way of breaking out. I'm, I'm, I'll probably need another one. Anyway, so that was the advent of code in JQ. Um, like I said, I, I, I learned something. Well, not learned something. I basically made my own from binary function. Um, and what are the highlights in this? Uh, so map select is a filter. Um, you can pass in uh, expressions. So this could be like a whole bunch of things. I could pass in like a not or a debug. Um, and it will only run that part of the expression when it encounters it here. Uh, so you can pass in expressions as arguments, which is pretty cool. Um, we So this wrapping the whole thing in brackets keeps the scope as, um, it doesn't affect the scope basically, or the scope like the current context, um, because if I didn't wrap it in brackets, it would switch the context from the full array to you know, whoops, the result of this naught and one, or actually the result of the op, um, which would just mess up the whole thing. Um, and empty is pretty cool, because <clears throat> it's just a way of saying, don't put an element in here in, in an array, or don't have an output, uh, which is pretty handy. So yeah, uh, tomorrow's Saturday, so I'll see if I have time. Um, hopefully I don't fall behind that early. Thanks for watching.